morning, good afternoon, good evening, my family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. All right, you guys, you know us, we still got those t shirts. Um, and I don't know if the, you know what, I shouldn't even say anything about them because I don't even know if the website is up. Um, I gotta do better. Listen. But we do still have the t-shirts, you guys, and you can um, go to, um, actually, you can just send me an email and send me your size, and we can get it to you. Uh, I think there's some more t-shirts up there as well, but I, I think before I begin to talk about that, let me make sure I got more information, Okay. So, with that being said, let me just move on around to my initial uh, reason for making this video. Okay. You know, we've been hearing a lot of stuff, and I don't do celebrity gossip, but I think that there's a couple relationships, you know, with celebrities that, that are in front of our faces on a daily basis. And I'm really seeing some red flags and um, it's not because I want to see them, but because through my, uh, you know, dynamic and of working on myself and, and our issues, I begin to see a lot of things more clearly. I begin to see codependent behavior. I begin to see hoovering behavior um, more closely, you know, like when you break up with somebody or you're not around that person, you put some... And they begin to not want to address the things that made things go sour. But they want to just continue to start where they were and keep it moving. These are the things I noticed now. And I, 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 I might not have never, I might have noticed it before. But I never really paid close attention to it. And really called it what it is. Like a thing, a thing. Like red flags. And things that. That make you feel uncomfortable when your intuition go uh uh not now or uh uh that's not gonna work or you have to be have a spirit of discernment to listen to yourself. Um, one of the things I always talk about, um, and I was actually having a conversation with one of the subs about hoovering and what that looks like. Uh, he was telling me how he was. Um, he suspected he knew that he was being hoovered beginning to be hoovered back by his ex-wife and um, you know did I think it was healthy or, you know and what I told him is I understand that situation I understand it very clearly because sometimes if you've been around a person a long time especially when we start talking about over 10 years a lot of times you're attached to that person and addicted to that person in more ways than one. You make a lot of bad choices thinking that you are, you know, is this is this the time that this worship relationship is going to work? Is this the time where this relationship is going to get better? But what you have to do is go by your past experience. And your past experience should have showed you um, this person is not ever willing to take responsibility for that behavior. This person is always blaming other people. For things that um, maybe possibly they could have something to do with. So you listen to their conversations. And so whenever I'm listening to a person and when I don't hear them taking responsibility for their behavior right away for me, that's a red flag. Because I take responsibility for mine right away. I, I, I can say exactly um, why I apologize. And I apologize because my behavior was such, and I'm specific. Um, I know that calling names in a relationship is very bad for not only the, the person that's hearing it, but for the person that's um, saying it. Because you both feel bad about it. Um, and when you are that angry and irate, that you call people that you love names and you get enraged to that degree. 
I'm not saying that you're a bad person. I'm just saying that if we don't address, and if you don't address, not we, if we, you don't address what makes you that angry, then it's hard to have a relationship and intimate with that kind of person because what's going to happen is first you're going to feel valued and then they're going to devalue you. It's all going to be like a continuous thing and then they just, you know, it's like, devalue and then they just just drop you <laughs> you understand and I mean that emotionally so then you go through a certain amount of time then you come back and you repeat the same cycle over and over and over and over again that's a very unhealthy relationship when you are with someone who's extremely jealous in my opinion, going through your phone books, uh, going, you know, dropping by unexpectedly, being very controlling. These are things that sometimes we may not know that we are controlling, but we could be. And there's controlling, controlling, and then there's out of your mind controlling. Like, let me go to the mailbox with you when you check the mail. <laughs> or what are you doing walking around the house? You know, or what who was that on the phone? That's insanity. So when you're living in those kind of relationships, it makes it very difficult. Okay. Usually people like that want to get involved real quickly. They want to expedite the relationship real fast. You know, they put pressure on you to commit. Um, you know, and they don't have very healthy boundaries because they're trying to get you to commit to something, right? So they can be attached to you like a parasite. And after they get tired of you, again, they're going to devalue you and then they're going to dump you more than likely. And if not physically, all together, mentally, until they find somebody else and move on. Okay, all these things. And it's the same the, the, the thing about it is it's very it's very reminiscent of a person who has suffered um, a real bad childhood especially when they keep going back because most healthy people when they're not treated in that fashion or when somebody hurts them to the core like that and they know that I need to get out of this um, because it's not healthy. I might like this person. I might love this person, but it's not healthy. And this person is not bringing the best out of me. This person is bringing the worst out of me. And they don't care to even want to have a conversation because maybe they can't. Maybe they're not interested in fixing their personality. Maybe they don't know it's serious enough where every day you have to work on your personality every day and you can't think that you know it all in terms of what you're exhibiting to the whole world because everybody's not making up stuff about how you're acting so when you got a serious emotional brain it just can't handle logic and so my brain is works very logical it doesn't work emotional first of all I grew up around eight brothers so that makes it very likely that I would have logical thinking and I grew up with a father in my home so I'm more logical than I am emotional okay and I, I know that about myself so um, when when I see situations and I know that this is the emotional side of a situation I begin to try to look deeper and say, oh, wow, hmm. that person might have some issues they're not dealing with yet. And especially if they've been brought up, like most households, dysfunctional. Very rarely do you find a real healthy household, you know. But, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm saying this to say with Wendy Williams, I'm 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 feeling some kind of way. 
There's some pictures surfacing around the internet with her husband, Kevin, and that person that he's supposed to be having an affair with. I mean, and the woman looks pregnant. And if so, and if he's humiliating Wendy like that, and Wendy, because of her age or because of what's involved, won't get away from somebody that is publicly humiliating her, humiliating her, then I would feel that there's some codependency involved. A lot of times when we have a history of drug use, when we have a history of uh, not feeling the best about ourselves, we allow people to get away with a lot more than, they, than we should. And um, because we have a fear of not wanting to, of, of being alone, we don't want to be alone. A lot of times we put up more than we should and then it gets out of hand. And I hope that's not what's happening with her and Kevin. Um, but it looks pretty humiliating now. And I, some people say Wendy's scared and that she is in an abusive relationship. But I'm concerned that she fell out last week. And in her falling out, she was at work the next day. And um, if that was somebody that I love, I'm just going to tell you about me. I would have had a hard time them being in front of the camera the next day. And I want to feel like somebody loves me enough that if I fell out like that, that even if I wanted to, they would be like, no, baby, you going to rest today. Today is not the day you're going to jump in front of the camera and do a damn thing. <laughs> you just fell out. And sometimes we need people like that in our lives. And I'm just hoping Kevin is that for her. And if he's not, I hope Wendy has the courage to. Um, because, yeah, it's scary to be alone, period, when you get older. But I suspect that it's no different than a person that's been around people all their life at any age and now suddenly find themselves alone. That's all. Being older brings other little um, significant attributes. But I don't think anything is worth you compromising your self-respect for like that. And if you have, it's never too late to stop. That's the way I look at it. And lastly, you guys, lastly, 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 because like I said, I don't want to make this a gossip situation, <laughs> but y'all know, I mean, I live here too. I look at Tyrese, and I don't um, know if anybody thinks that that's normal. Um, I believe. And I, I'm, I'm saying this because I'm really concerned. I believe Tyrese is having somewhat of a mental breakdown, emotional breakdown. And because we are so used to seeing craziness and, un, you know, stable people, it ain't nothing. We got people making fun. We got people saying, oh, he's just doing this. And, oh, he just loves his father. Oh, I mean, loves his daughter. And yada, yada. Listen, Tyrese is showing me red flags right now. And I'm concerned. I'm concerned about him twerking. On the video. I'm concerned about all this. Uh, crazy. And to me in my opinion. Unorthodox behavior. Um, you know he's, he's doing a lot of rambling. Uh, you know along with his breaking down. And then. The, the thing where somebody says that. I don't know if this is true. That Jada and Will gave him five million dollars. To shut his mouth. He stated that they didn't. And then you got Will and Jada saying, no, that didn't happen. We didn't give this guy anything. If what is going on, and last but not least, if he started this whole craziness over his daughter and afraid that he was going to lose custody, and he went on this tyrant crying, and then the, the, the first day of his visitation for his showing up for the daughter, he didn't even show up. That to me is red flag, red flag, and I hope nothing happens. And I hope that Tyrese, good friends, people that care about him, can talk to him about just relaxing and 
talking about how he feels on the inside. Forget about your money, cars, and jewelry, and all that. What's going on in the inside? How do you feel as a man? Because that's important. Do you feel lost? Feel alone? Do you feel with all that stuff you got around you for real, for real? You don't know how to handle. You just, you, you, you reckless. And I think that, you know, he, something needs to wake him up um, to be accountable. Right? So, I'm done. That's my little rant for today. Um, <laughs> I think I will be back a little later with another video. So, if you like what you hear, until the next time, see you in the mental house. Like, hey, subscribe and.